or write in the chat, do that. Recording in progress. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, as Diana said, this is a very interactive session and we invite everyone to participate and to speak up and to share your experiences. So don't be shy, raise your hand and Diana will uh, give you a stage to, to talk. And yes, cool. And just a small reminder, who are we aiming to get this workshop for is basically all of you. It doesn't matter if you are new to learning and development or you're already an L&D expert. The most important is uh, the way how you are passionate about L&D and interested in that. Uh, so we, uh, we are making that for you. <laughs> And uh, speaking about our like main objective of today, of course, we all want to brainstorm, to have new ideas, maybe some solutions to find an inspiration, and most importantly, to have fun. And lastly, I encourage you to uh, talk with us anytime you are comfortable with that. And I guess we can start the main session. Yes, and let's have fun. Anya, stage to you. <laughs> Let's have fun with the first icebreaker uh, <laughs> about your feelings about artificial intelligence. Uh, select one or all or some of the options from A to D. How do you feel about AI and why? Uh, and feel free to post them on the chat or just unmute yourself and share. Oh, Zlata already shared D. That's really cool. Do you want to share more? Why D? I see that Zlata, you unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you. Um, yeah. Hey. Um, no, that was an accident, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, well, basically, I just think that as uh, any tool that could be used for good or bad, and that if informed, well experimented, and appropriate for a particular solution that could be like a really great support. So I think most of the suspicion and worry comes from um, not enough information, basically. Definitely, definitely. I totally agree with you. And I see that more questions or more answers are coming in like B and A. Oh, A, that's interesting. Uh, do you want to elaborate why A? <laughs> Uh, I give um a as like kind of like a it's like a amazing what you can do, but sometimes suspicious like uh, are we going to think by our mind like uh, our brain are going to be used uh, in the process or are we going only to rely on a that's the reason like kind of thinking how to find the balance. Makes sense. Makes sense. To be honest, I'm also A sometimes. I think I'm uh, all of these, <laughs> all of these things. And A, uh, I'm A when I read too much about AI and hear too much about AI and it's just everywhere. And at that point, I turn into this green A and I'm like, <laughs> can I have something else, please? <laughs> can we talk about something else? But today we're talking about AI. I see more Bs are coming in and C and D and even A, C, D. Uh, and D. Okay, then we have the whole range of uh, reactions to AI. I hope we will all transition to mostly D today, uh, but all the other reactions are also, you know, fine. Um, okay, then let's move on to the main session. Uh, so what's AI? Uh, it's a technology, first of all, that can perform human-like tasks or tasks that require human-like intelligence. If you think about ChatGPT, it's something that can generate human-like text. Uh, and actually, all of us are using AI. Even if you're not using ChatGPT, you probably use face recognition on your smartphone, and that's powered by AI. Uh, or you use social media, and the social media feed is also powered by an AI algorithm, which selects things that you like usually and that you react to. So even if you haven't used ChatGPT or any of the other tools that came around a year ago and became very popular and made AI hype, you're still familiar with AI and you've probably used it uh, already and you're using it every day. Now, as Lata said, it's a tool. AI is a tool. It's not 
a solution in itself. It's a very powerful tool. So if you know how to use it, it can be like a knife with which you can cook a delicious, uh, healthy meal. Uh, if you don't know how to use it, or if someone is intentionally using it with a bad purpose, then it can be a, a knife which is used for harmful purposes, basically. Uh, so today I will cover the good parts of how to cook a delicious meal uh, with this AI knife. Uh, and I will touch a little bit on the harmful part or what to watch out for when you're using AI. So there will be three main pillars and uh, feel free to jump in, post your comments, uh, thoughts, ideas. Uh, at the end, we'll have also a discussion around all these uh, use cases. The three main pillars will be how we can boost productivity with AI. So basically save time by using AI tools and free this time up for something more important. Uh, then the second pillar is how we can use AI to improve learning solutions that we are designing and providing to our stakeholders and customers and ourselves also. Uh, and finally, the last pillar is, you know, after we have boosted our productivity, so we have more time and after we've developed great learning solutions, now what do we need to learn to be prepared for this future where we use AI every day, some tasks are being automated, some new tasks emerge, some new skills are becoming relevant. So what do we need to train for to be prepared and resilient in this tech future. So this will be the three main pillars and let's start with productivity. So first of all, why productivity at all? Uh, there have been quite a lot of studies, uh, especially since ChatGPT came out. I'd like to be sure that we're happy to work around your scheduling base and provide you with the best support. Apologies, Filipa, if you could mute yourself, uh, that would be nice. I, I muted Filippo. I, I yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect, because I don't have the admin rights. Uh, okay, uh, so productivity gains. There have been quite a lot of studies tapping into, like, are we actually more productive with AI? Uh, and the answer is really yes and no. And here I included the latest study, which was done by Harvard Business School and Boston Consulting Group, where they looked uh, and compared two groups of people using AI and not using AI for their work-related tasks. And they uncovered that, well, usually using AI increases your productivity uh, and it can increase your productivity by as much as 40%. And especially it increases productivity for those employees who are performing averagely. So the average performers benefit the most from using AI tools. The top performers benefit less from using AI tools. At the same time, this study also uncovered that we shouldn't use AI for all the tasks. So there were certain tasks that implied that the employee has understanding of the business problem or internal business data. And with these tasks, of course, AI, you shouldn't feed this sort of data into a public AI. So AI could not help as much with the tasks that required specific business knowledge for the company. Uh, and I would really encourage you to go and read the study because it covers a lot of use cases and when AI worked and really helped boost productivity when it also did not work and what to watch out for. But basically it is great to boost performance, especially on ideation tasks when you need to brainstorm, when you need to come up with ideas fast. Uh, and it is not so great when you need to do proper business problem solving that requires more business specific data. But altogether, AI usually boosts productivity. And in the next slide, I'll share a few tools that I use to boost my own productivity, especially when I'm developing trainings. Okay, can I just say, yeah. I Go think ahead. this uh, security and data protection and overall uh, uh, this security things uh, while using AI could be a separate topic itself because a lot of people do don't even realize they are sharing some very sensitive information while using uh, public tools like ChatGPT and so on. So I think we could think of something for our future sessions on the, in this regard. Oops. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I see that you are already very eager to read the study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting study. I highly recommend. Um, okay, so the productivity tools. 
Uh, for me personally, uh, I spend a lot of time researching and searching for information and data and so on. Uh, so for me, AI became a game changer in at this point when I need to find some sort of studies or some sort of information and I want to find it fast. I don't want to keep going through Google pages and reviewing each and every study and page. So there are two tools that I use to find information in a summarized format with the links that I need. Um, yeah, uh, these are two tools, the Perplexity AI and the Microsoft Bing. Uh, so the Perplexity AI is on this screenshot and you can see that you can ask a question. So for example, I uh, ask questions like, um, what would be the impact of learning objectives on training design? Can you provide quantified studies? So usually you don't put that kind of question into the Google search because with the Google search, you need keywords. You don't ask elaborate questions. With the Perplexity AI, you can do that and you can even select uh, which sources you want it to use. So you can see in the screenshot, it, it can use all sources, so like the whole internet. It can also go for more academic sources or for YouTube or for Reddit, uh, whatever you need really. Uh, and then once you ask this question, Perplexity AI basically they get, generates an answer uh, and that's like a text answer. It is not just a list of links. It's a text answer, which is a summary of what it found. And it contains all the links to all the studies or sources that it used. Uh, so instead of going, I often go to Google Scholar or I used to go to Google Scholar and look for lots of studies. Now I go to Perplexity AI, I ask a question and then I review its answer and I follow the links that it suggested, especially if I asked for studies and check whether the answer um, you know, is aligned with the study that it is citing because there is still some room for hallucination and for some incorrect answers. Uh, so that saves a lot of time and the same works for Microsoft Bing. Uh, it works in the Microsoft Edge browser. You can uh, if you have this browser or it's a free browser, you can install it and then basically ask a question and Bing generates an answer just like ChatGPT, but with the links to the sources that it has used. So that's uh, one of the ways to save some time on searching for information and researching. Um, uh, should I go to the next slide? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to to add that uh, it's probably not a good idea to use ChatGPT for that because ChatGPT yeah. could also generate links. They just ca can be uh, wrong or false links because it invents information and not goes to, to the actual sources. Okay. Yeah, definitely. To add to that, if you have ChatGPT+, Plus, so the paid version, they have now, uh, so they removed this uh, internet search for some time, but now it's back to the paid version. So in the paid version, you can use it, but it's basically Bing. So you don't need a paid ChatGPT version to use internet search. You can go to Bing, which is uh, free. Uh, so uh, the other productivity tools uh, and the other use cases, uh, for me, this is mostly summarizing information. So if I have a long article, I'm not sure whether I want to read it. I can go into tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Google Bard, I don't use it often, but these are three alternative tools. Uh, for my taste, I find ChatGPT and Claude uh, the best ones, especially ChatGPT4 uh, or GPT4, which is available in the in the paid ChatGPT version. Uh, so um, these tools provide can provide a text summary. They can provide you with information on a new topic. You still should fact check this information, but if you need to learn, for example, about AI and how it works, you can ask ChatGPT or Claude or Bard explain it like M5 and it will explain it to you. And then you can go and read more complex sources with a basic understanding because it explained uh, the topic to you like your five. And finally, another use case is building a prototype for a tech solution. So for example, if you want to uh, write a Google Chrome extension or maybe a Zoom plugin, or you have some sort of other idea, you want to develop an app, but you don't know where to start. Uh, and you want to explain your idea to someone, but you really need a demo or a prototype for that, you can use tools like ChatGPT or Claude to code it together with you and debug it together with you, even if you don't have specific tech knowledge, and build this prototype. It will not be a final functioning solution, but it will be a prototype that you can show to others, get their feedback, and then think through the next steps if you want to con continue with this idea and develop it uh, or not. 
Uh, and of course, there are some things to keep in mind, especially with these use cases, hallucinations. This is the word uh, for when AI basically provides you with incorrect information or makes things up. Uh, it can make things up. Uh, so be aware of that and check information, especially facts. If you're asking it for facts, you should also go and check the resources, the other resources. Um, AI, AI's answer can also be biased uh, because the data that AI was trained on uh, was probably biased. You know, humans are biased. We generate biased data, and then if this biased data goes into AI, then the AI system is biased as well. So there is no cure for AI bias for now. Uh, the only way to counter it is really to be aware of possible biases and review AI answers for possible biases. And to do that, you also have to be aware of your own biases, which is another challenge, of course. Yeah. Uh, and data privacy, of course, as uh, Ola already mentioned, data privacy is a huge concern. Uh, tools like ChatGPT currently have, and they update their data policies so they can um, they inform you how they use the data that you provide ChatGPT with. And you can, in case with ChatGPT, you can even opt out of using your data for training. Uh, but still, whichever tool you're using, you should always check their data policy and make sure that uh, you're not putting any confidential data into the tool, especially if you don't have like a special enterprise subscription or something like that, where the confidential data will remain confidential. Yeah. So that's it really for productivity tools, unless someone wants to share something or add something. Yeah, I see Jonathan, you have your hand raised. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah, hi, John. It's just a, it's a question about um, Claude's um, and, and how effective it is at summarizing documents. Um, do you mean how effective and compared to ChatGPT or uh, in well, general? I think actually my question is about AI really generally. I, 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 at summarizing documents so let's say for example you, you wanted to explore like, like a new area you, you know you, you want to um like plan a project for example and there's lots of information out there there's various articles etc how effect how effective is ai at um at, at, at summarizing all of that info um so it really depends on the model that you're using uh, there are some models that would be more accurate and will hallucinate less. Some models will hallucinate more. In case with Claude, so Claude and GPT-4, which is available through paid chat GPT subscription, these are the most efficient models. So if you want to use a model to summarize information, you should probably go for one of these ones. But still, you should have guardrails that will check uh, the summary uh, and I mean it also depends on your use case how you want to use the summary if it's just for your own information then it might not matter that much uh, how accurate it is but if you want to use this summary further in documentation or policies then of course it has to be verified uh, speaking of Claude also uh, Claude is an interesting uh, case because it has a very large context window which means that you can provide a lot of information to Claude and it will not forget it. So if you're using ChatGPT, you know, at some point in this dialogue, it starts forgetting what has been said before. Uh, and you have kind of to remind it, to repeat it. Uh, Claude has a very large, this is called context window and Claude has a very large context window, uh, around 100,000 tokens, which is around a book. So when they release this large context window for Claude, the developers, Anthropic, they actually fed the whole book into Claude, the great Gatsby, uh, and they changed one sentence in the book. And they asked Claude which sentence was changed. And Claude was able to provide an accurate response. And, you know, a whole book is a lot of information. So in your case, if you need to summarize a lot of information, Claude would also make more sense. Um, on a different note, Claude is only available in a few countries right now. Uh, the last time I checked, it was uh, the UK and the US. Uh, so they're still, they have not expanded to all the geographies, whereas ChatGPT is more widely available. Um, uh, I wanted to add, Anya, you, uh, a lot of times, many times you spoke about hallucinations and bias, and you uh, spoke about fact-checking. And uh, I wanted to share a course from Edera 
on the fact checking. I think Diana will paste it now into the chat. Uh, it's a great course uh, on media literacy, fact checking to verify information. And uh, it's uh, easy to follow. And yeah, it's just a great course. Uh, and it's very important in nowadays of uh, internet and a lot of disinformation going on to know the basic principles of how to fact check things. Exactly. And just a small reminder from my side, we are almost at the middle of the session, but we have a lot of information to cover. So maybe just speed up a bit. Okay, let's become productive. Ooh, next slide. Yeah, next slide and next pillar really is AI powered learning solutions. So how can we use AI to improve learning solutions? And uh, here I had four main use cases, but of course there are more to be discovered. So don't feel constrained by them. These are just for inspiration, uh, really. Uh, first of all, we can develop content faster with AI, uh, which means that we should think one more time whether we need content at all, of course. But if the solution is indeed the content, then you can use a few AI tools to develop it faster, and I will share the, these AI tools later. Uh, then there is another use case with automated grading, especially if you have long-reaching assignments in your trainings. You usually need a human to grade them, to look at the response of the learner, to use some sort of rubric, and to compare them, you know, to provide feedback to the learner. With tools like GPT, uh, and ChatGPT, uh, you could provide ChatGPT with a rubric and the learner response and ask it to provide feedback and to grade. Um, there is also authentic practice uh, and that I will cover a bit later because I have a few examples and I feel like examples speak for themselves really and the personalized learning paths, which is a very complex use case really because AI allows to provide a sort of personalized experience with which was not possible before. AI can act as a tutor. So in your interaction with ChatGPT, your interaction with ChatGPT is really highly personalized. It responds to your specific questions and it can remember context on, of the conversation. If we can scale that, if we can collect data about how learners learn and provide them with very specific recommendations, that would also create a really personalized learning path powered by AI. And now let's dive deeper into each of the use cases. And Diana, I promise I will be uh, fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it does it mean that if uh, any of you have any questions that you uh, shouldn't ask to, to make things faster, please do it because uh, interaction uh, is very important here. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. The pressure is on me, not, in, not on the participants. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so content development, uh, we can use AI to generate text. I think that's uh, already clear. There are a few tools free tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Bard. There are more out there. These are just the three popular ones. And speaking of Google Bard, it hasn't been so great in comparison to ChatGPT and Claude, uh, but Google has recently announced that there will be the Google Gemini engine soon, uh, which might match uh, Claude and ChatGPT in performance. So I'm saying this because I think those of us who use these tools, they are getting used to one of the tools, but we don't have to because all of them are being developed. And tomorrow there might be something new from Google or from Microsoft or, or from another company, which will provide better performance and better text generation capabilities than the current tools. Uh, then there are a few AI tools that can generate videos. I included only two here, but if you're interested in this topic, just Google it or perplexity it uh, or Bing it, and you will find uh, a lot more AI powered tools. Uh, Synthesia is for now probably the most famous one. This is a tool which can generate an AI avatar of a person, of an expert, uh, which will speak in the video, basically. It can generate a video with an AI-powered avatar. Uh, and Genmo AI can generate videos and images just based on your text prompt. So you can ask it, generate a video of, I don't know, the mountains or the beach or uh, someone talking in the office, and it will provide you with a video snippet of it. And then you can talk to it and improve your video snippet. Uh, there are tools that can generate images, a lot of tools. Uh, the most popular ones and powerful ones are DALI 3, which was released just a couple of days ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and Midjourney, which is currently closed and available under paid. 
uh, subscription, and both of them can just generate an image based on your text prompt. So you can ask it generate again uh, an image of an office in a certain style, and it will do it for you. Uh, and there are finally AI tools that can generate voiceovers and music for you. So if you keep spending time looking for voiceover talent, take a look at these tools. There is the Well Said Labs, there is also Eleven Labs, and so on, uh, that can now generate really human-like voices, not robotic voices. Uh, in uh, even in different languages. These are just examples of the tools. There are many more. So if you feel like there is a use case for you, feel free to research. And I'm pretty sure you will find a tool that will fit your needs. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, speaking of a practical application, of course, we couldn't uh, not speak about Workademy. At Workademy, we, our uh, co course editor is uh, what you see is what you get. And every text field is powered by AI. And uh, as Anya said, uh, it remembers the context. So I will give here an example how using uh, backward planning. Uh, so starting from the title and learning outcomes, you can build a piece of content in a really fast way. So for example, let's say we want to build a course for sales reps for a software as a service platform and we can ask AI to do that and it generates a title and then we go on and ask it to generate a description uh, with learning outcomes and we can go further ask it to create learning outcomes based on Bloom's taxonomy and we don't even have to mention for which course because it remembers the context and it will generate learning outcomes for this course that we can edit uh, of course and moderate because uh, uh, the AI cannot live without experts who can make it more tailored to business case or to the learners they are working with. And then after that, we proceed to evaluation and I can specifically say, hey, create a single choice question uh, for the first learning outcome. And it already knows which outcome it is because it remembers the context. So it will generate a question which we can edit further. Mm -hmm. And then we can say, hey, and now write a paragraph for a lecture that would prepare learners to answer the first question. And uh, here we are with the full paragraph about uh, um, sales of uh, software as a service platform that, of course, we should edit and moderate uh, based on our business case. And that was like two minutes of uh, work. Of course, there will be more minutes spent on moderating, but it, it nothing, it's nothing compared to what we would spend if we were just um, displayed a blank page, uh, how much time it takes to overpass the fear of that blank page. So, yeah. And now getting back to Anya. I have a quick question about this feature. So uh, you showed that there is an AI powered feature in the Academy in the LMS, right? Uh, and it's an AI powered feature basically by OpenAI. Uh, so it's an integration with OpenAI. Do I need to have an account in OpenAI in ChatGPT in order to be able to use this feature? Yes, yes, you would have to, to, to switch the integration on yet and provide your API key in, in order to make it work. But that's just a short notice that's really cool feature because not so many LMSs have uh, AI tool integrated and we at there were planning around a lot with that for English courses. So that's really cool work Academy has it. Uh, nice, nice. Great that you use it. All right, uh, I guess that was a feature on the intersection of productivity and content development, really, because you can develop content faster, but you still, of course, need an expert review to take a look at that content and say that everything is uh, correct. So the next use case after faster content development is also automated or faster grading. Uh, and here I was basically talking to ChatGPT and asking it to grade a written assignment against a set of criteria. And you see that I did not provide the written assignment I meant the set of criteria or the learner's response that I want to be graded, but it asked me about them. So I could continue and basically provide it with all these things. And it knows, uh, it knows, you know, uh, uh, that um, it needs this information in order to do the grading. Uh, of course, we need a human in the loop 
with this. Uh, so the human should check the output, that the, the output is accurate and really according to the set of criteria. Uh, but uh, it's just faster if you know you don't have to do the whole grading yourself and you can do just the review. Uh, so that would be the use case number two with faster grading. Uh, the use case with authentic practice, uh, I actually wanted to show an example here, uh, which I think is brilliant, a brilliant example of authentic practice in general. Uh, Duolingo has integrated GPT-4 into uh, its extra paid subscription called Duolingo Max, and it uses uh, GPT-4 uh, for two use cases of authentic practice. And authentic practice is when you practice on a real world task, basically, or in a task which is as close to real world as it can be. Uh, so the Duolingo integrated an option to explain the answer. So if you're speaking to this Duolingo bot and you're in Spanish, let's say, and you're speaking to the Duolingo bot in Spanish, it can explain what mistakes you've made and how you can improve uh, based on your responses. And it ha also has role play features. So it can role play a certain conversation in Spanish or French uh, with uh, the Duolingo bot and basically practice your language skills in a conversational way. But you don't need a language partner right away. You can do this with a Duolingo bot. So an, it's an automated authentic practice example. It's not available in all languages yet. But if you're learning languages, I would encourage you to go and um, try it out because it's it's a fun experience and it's uh, really one of the most interesting use cases because when it comes to conversational practice and to language practice, it could not be automated before, uh, but it can be automated to, a, to an extent, of course, uh, now. Nice. Do you know if it has Ukrainian language? I don't think so. I think it's only, uh, well, English and Spanish, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, but uh, we would need to check there, just rolling it out. Uh, I see a question from Jonathan. This would be good for intermediate learners in particular. I think you would need to check, really. Uh, since it's a new feature, you would need to check what kind of dialogues and what level of role plays they're already offering. It might be the case that it's only the beginner role plays for now, but they will be probably, if it's a successful feature, they might be expanding it in the future. Uh, and another example of authentic practice uh, is a tool called Poised, and it's an application that you can install on your uh, laptop, and it will evaluate how you speak in the meetings, how you present, how you participate in job interviews, and it will give you feedback based on how confident you sound, how many filler words you use, and so on. Uh, now, I'm not advertising this tool, really. I'm just giving it as an example of authentic practice that can be possible with AI. Uh, I've used Poised a little bit, and I can't say that I'm completely satisfied with the output. Uh, but you know, AI and AI for authentic practice is it's an at its at its early stage, really. Mm -hmm. So I used Poised rather to see what it what's possible now and what can can be possible in the future. Uh, and they're also developing this tool further. And finally, personalized learning use case. After we have you know, faster content, better grading, better practice, we can personalize and tailor the whole experience to the learner without having to do it manually. And I think one of the interesting use cases here and examples here is Han Migo by Han Academy. They've also released it recently and it's also based on GPT-4. And basically Han Migo is a tutor. Again, it's a chatbot style format. Uh, to which the learner can talk uh, about uh, their homework, about uh, certain concepts. Uh, the learner can ask um, uh, Han Migo to explain certain concepts or to help with the homework. And you can see in the example that Han Academy provides is actually that when the learner asked, can you just let me tell me the answer? it said no, and that it's important to understand why the answer is the way it is. And then it went on to explain how to solve a certain kind of problem. Uh, so this is already becoming possible. Uh, it's becoming possible to have a personalized learning experience. It would require more data analytics, of course. So if you have a data uh, collection or data storage proper procedure from the LMS, you can think about automating data insights and then using these data insights to tailor and personalize the whole learning experience with all the content and practice and grading that you provide in the system that you use. 
I love the name Khan Migo. It's like <laughs> Khan, nice. Yeah. And I mean, this is really, uh, we are almost at the end uh, of uh, the uh, talking part uh, of uh, this session. Uh, and this is the third pillar. So we talked about boosting productivity and improving learning solutions. But then once we have enough time to develop great learning solution and we develop these great learning solutions, uh, it's time to think, ideally it's time to think about this at the beginning really, but who has the time? Uh, it's time to think, uh, what do we need to learn to be prepared for the future? With the AI and its current capabilities and its developing capabilities, some jobs will become, if not fully automated, they will be automated to a large extent. And there are already industries that uh, will be impacted the most, like customer service or text content generation or office support. Uh, I'm not saying that AI will be will completely remove human from these jobs, but this means that one human will be able to do much more. So there will be uh, you know fewer humans in demand uh, in customer service or text content generation because most of this generation will be done by AI and human will act as a reviewer. Uh, then there will be another bucket of jobs that will change. The role will change, and this will happen with teaching and learning. You know, if I can go and ask a bot to explain a physics concept to me, then I might not go to the teacher, but I would still need some coaching and support and tutoring from the teacher. It will just be more, uh, it might be more complex. I might, I might need more complex feedback, or I might want to cover more complex, again, problems or use cases with the teacher. So the jobs of the teachers and learning professionals and creative professionals will change. And we need to be prepared for that. We need to have skills for this change. And finally, there will be a bucket of jobs that will emerge. They might not exist now, or they might be just emerging now. Uh, for example, AI product management. It has been there for a while, but now it's really emerging and becoming a very demanded job. Or there might be jobs around responsible AI. How do we build AI systems that are less biased and that hallucinate less? There will be jobs around AI regulation and legal side of AI. How do we use AI legally and properly? And how do we align our policies, current policies to AI? So there will be some jobs that will emerge. And of course, for these jobs, we will need training as well. So I would encourage you really at the end of this conversation to think about how will your industry and your organization change and how can you help it prepare for this future? What are the skills that you might need in this AI enhanced future and what can you do now already to start getting prepared uh, and just a final inspirational use case i've read recently on a steal these thoughts newsletter i highly recommend this newsletter a letter by ross stevenson he's been covering a lot uh, in regard to lnd in general and to ai in lnd specifically and uh, he described this use case when ikea uh, developed an AI bot to uh, automate some of its customer service, but then people who worked in the customer service were upskilled in interior design. So they are currently providing consulting on interior design to the clients and boost IKEA sales because they are helping IKEA to sell uh, more furniture uh, based on their interior design recommendations. So this is one of these use cases when the company has systematically trained its workforce for the future, automated its previous jobs to an extent, again, they did not replace 100% of customer service and provided them with the new jobs that are boosting sales uh, for the company. That's amazing. I think that's an incredible example. Yeah, I agree. Oh. So, yeah, that's it really. Uh, and now we have the discussion and planning part. I see that Diana shared the Jamboard. Uh, so feel free to jump to the Jamboard, copy the worksheet that uh, Ola has prepared for you uh, and jot down your thoughts on it. And I guess we'll come back to the discussion, how much time we have to come back to do the exercise and then come back for a discussion and just sharing. Let's have five minutes to write down our thoughts and then have a discussion.
Oi, I'm sharing my screen so you can see what I'm writing, but it's okay. Yeah, it's a nice <laughs> experience sharing experience in life. <laughs> Let's have one more minute and then maybe Anya, if I can ask you to go through uh, the slides and comment on some. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I would also encourage participants to un unmute themselves and maybe share, you know, their insights or use cases that you came up with during the session, because the idea is to share experience and not just for me uh, to talk under pressure from Diana. <laughs> Uh, while people are still uh, writing their things, I can comment on my thing. I think uh, for uh, at least for work academy to prepare organization for change would be really encouraging people to learn more about project and product management, to jump more on this role of where you managing stuff while automated tools uh, do more job for you. Uh, it's uh, really important, I think. Yeah, totally agree. I also see that there is a sticker saying attend Adara premium courses. Would someone elaborate on that? <laughs> it was Diana, no? <laughs> no, surprisingly, no. Wow. <laughs> I also wrote for, to for upskilling myself to network with like-minded people. Uh, although, yeah, AI is great, but people are greater. <laughs> and I think when we meet and we change information, there are some very unexpected uh, uh, usages of AI that we can apply in very different um, um, environments and situations. And it, you can't know it if you don't talk to people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if we are more productive with AI, then I hope that we can have more time to actually interact with other people and exchange ideas and collaborate instead of, instead of spending time on just 
manual and repetitive tasks. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I already learned something today. I, yesterday I couldn't speak, because, couldn't speak, couldn't sleep because uh, I need a, a, a piece of voice recorded telling some things for one of my um, um, future demonstrations. And I was thinking, whom should I ask to record the voice? And I learned that uh, we can use AI tools for that, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And you can use AI even in different languages. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will try to write after this webinar. Yeah, I see that we are still actively adding new stickers to the Jamboard, but maybe someone wants to unmute and share ideas, insights, plans, anything really. Yeah, I think it's just Jana organizing them nicely. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah, please, uh, uh, if anyone wants to share, please do. It, it's okay if you don't. In any case, uh, this Jamboard will stay forever. Uh, so you can check it afterwards and uh, use uh, some ideas, these collaborative ideas. And uh, yeah. 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 I'm also looking at the Jamboard and there are quite a lot of great use cases here, actually. For example, improve accessibility, such as subtitles and transcripts. Mm -hmm. And that's something that AI can definitely do nowadays. And I know that even so if you use Articulate Storyline, for example, for uh, e-learning development, that now it has built-in features that will generate subtitles for you or, or closed captions for you, so already with the right timing. So this can be really uh, automated. And I mean, creating subtitles and tr transcripts manually is tedious work. Uh, yeah. And we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to share something. Hello, hello, I'm Marta. Hello. So for me, the main the main challenge has been for the past few months is just trying some tools and reading a lot and exchanging a lot of ideas with people that are using AI. It is quite overwhelming the number of updates and things that come out every day from all sides of industry. So what helped me was just to focus on L&D and education and try to read use case scenarios and people and share ideas with people around that. Um, there are a lot of, when I share at my company, so I'm an L&D uh, manager at a company. And when I share with my colleagues, HR, when they're trying to write procedures, as someone also shared there in one of the post-its, and I'm like, you can use, you can use ChatGPT or you can, another tool, like, I'll, I'll teach you how to prompt well, because some people are like, I tried, but the prompts don't really work. So it's, I, I think that the, the, the main work I've been doing is trying myself and together with other colleagues and uh, prompting better because people don't really understand how to take the most of the tool. So teaching how to prompt and reminding people that they can use these tools as thought partners for, and that they, they, they don't need to accept the result. They shouldn't actually. And that they can then enter, as you were saying, put the human in the loop. They can be the human in the loop with the tool. This has been like the main learning and experience quite exciting in the fast few months fast few months i love your use case and the overall experience thank you for sharing and just to add to that i think we've also seen that in at era chat gpt workshops that oftentimes um like you try to prompt chat gpt and it doesn't work and it's discouraging so you give up uh, whereas with tools like chat gpt you should just keep going and keep trying things out and keep iterating and at some point you will develop a strategy that will work for you of course there are certain prompting best practices that will help get to this point but also it just takes some time to develop the right strategy and the right style and voice that would match the way you write and you work with the information. 
I must uh, add to it that there are a lot of people who don't even know how to Google properly. And... <laughs> yes, it's true. Having prompt libraries uh, has helped me a lot. Uh, there's this website I usually consult because I was a teacher of kids, so it, my heart's there, so I usually always go there first. That is uh, AI for Education, uh, she, I can share here in the chat. She's been great in like making a prompt library for teachers and helping them out on how to better prompt. And that, that helped me in the beginning. I don't only, I don't go there now, but uh, I've, go, I've gone to other places as well, but it helped me a lot. And it seems it, it would be something necessary in companies, for example, in my organization, have examples of how to prompt. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And I, I think we are wrapping up, uh, Diana. Yes, exactly. Just one small note to add at Adara, we really have a chat GPT course where Anya is a trainer, but it's only in Ukrainian. So as soon as we translate it to English, I guess we're going to do some announcement because the information is very, very powerful. Just use AI to... Yeah. To... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> To everything for voiceover for pictures for lms yeah and for my face as well <laughs> and actually the rights of educators in the relation using your face using your voice using your work is also something really interesting to to talk about in the next uh, webinar i hope olga as you were saying yeah <laughs> And uh, yeah, here is uh, uh, a slide for you to follow us, follow Edera and Work Academy for EdTech news, for announcement of events like that. Uh, these are our LinkedIn accounts, but you can also easily find uh, both Edera and Work Academy on Instagram, on Facebook, and even on TikTok, because we are super modern <laughs> companies. Um, and, uh, oh, Diana. Yes, and uh, of course, we couldn't leave you without a gift. So type plus here in the chat. And later during the day, we're going to share with you a PDF with another AI resources that you can use in your job. Oh, a lot of pluses already. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, in that email, we also email you instruct instructions how to get a special discount for Work Academy once you want to uh, apply for an LMS. So it will be email with a, a very useful PDF and also some special discounts for our LMS. Cool. And I guess we can wrap it up. Thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, we really hope to see you soon in one month, exactly. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really nice. Thank you very much. Take care. Just in time. Super productive. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Really That's really fun. So, I, I, yeah, before I leave here, so thank you for presentation. So it is very interesting, and I'm glad that so Anya Anya uh introduced or uh, Anya used the pictures many in the many screens, so that's why yeah. it is very easier to understand. So yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, it is very difficult. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very. It is very sensible. So yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, how can I say? I research. I try to research the AI, uh, in the after the and uh, that after that yeah so thank you <laughs> thank you so much ray see thank you thank you ray uh -huh. yeah have a nice day thank you you too, you too. Bye. Mm -hmm. okay uh i created another link for the debrief i'm gonna share with you with slack so let's meet there but i will i can uh, i uh, i will remove people because okay. i think, I think that. that that would happen to them they just went to um, uh, for a coffee and forgot to switch off their uh, remove. So bye bye. Is that record? Ah, and I'm recording <laughs> that I'm removing people. Oh, <laughs> you can always cut it out. That's yeah,